former executive turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Connie is ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals to activate their power and live their dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur. It's time to sit down, lie down, or squat down and turn up the volume. Up or Out with Connie starts right now. Well, hello and welcome to Up or Out with Connie. We have another fantastic show here for you today. For the last couple of weeks, we've really been focusing on wellness and picking up your game and really going after what it is that you want. So, I mean, whether you're still in corporate or you're looking to step out and launch that lifestyle business that you're looking for, it's very, very important that you maintain your health, that your wellness is very good as well. Because if you don't have that energy, I mean, you just lose it. And I know that myself firsthand because I I have asthma and I go to the gym every day and I say that it's not because I'm losing weight because I still like eating pretty much anything. Uh, But I do try to be vegan. But at the same time, I say that I go to the gym so I can breathe. Because if I'm not doing that, I definitely see an impact on me and my health and just how I am able to function throughout the day. So today's guest really is going to help us talk more about that and advancing our wellness. And she happens to be the CEO and founder of Advancing Wellness. She's an expert in worksite well-being. Because think about it. I mean, I was in corporate for over 25 years and you go in and you're sitting at your desk, but you need to get that exercise. And she's going to share more about that because she has over 30 years of business experience in various areas of business from marketing, consulting, also executive roles across a variety of different industries. Now, for the past decade, she herself has been creating healthier businesses, which are impacting the life of their employees through her consulting work. And she's also a speaker and she speaks on work site well-being. She's earned her bachelor degree from Lesley University, an MBA from Boston University, a master's degree in health promotion from Nebraska Methodist College. And she's also a certified work site wellness consultant. She's the founder and former board chair of the Work Site Wellness Council of Mass. And she's also a member of the board of directors for health promotion advocates and global women for well-being. She's an active member in the National Speakers Association and a sister in our National Speakers Association Power Woman. And she's also the author of The Thriving Hive, How People-Centric Organizations Ignite Engagement and Fuel Results. So welcome to Upper Out with Connie, Mari Ryan. Hey, Mari, how are you? I'm great, Connie. Thanks so much for the invite to be here. I'm excited to spend some time with you today. You have such an extensive background in health and, and wellness and, and really how to how to thrive. So for organizations, what should they be looking at when they're considering creating some type of organizational culture that's really supporting the well-being of their workforce? You know, it's so important for organizations to remember that, you know, we often talk about the most important asset in our organization are our people. Our people, that's we right. We hear that all the time. Mm-hmm. Yet you and I have both heard and all of your audience has probably heard or experienced these horror stories about how people are treated in their organizations. So one of the things we want to think about when we're thinking about a culture in the workplace is really remembering that people truly are the most important asset, that an organization cannot accomplish their business objectives without people who are healthy, engaged, and really excited about being at work. So how does a company though re- find that balance of helping the employees be healthy plus making sure that the performance is happening? So if I can give an example, when sure. I worked I wor- years ago, I worked at a company called Axel Salt. They were fabulous in terms of helping, helping the employees be healthy. We had a gym on site. 
We had organized volleyball games during the summertime, baseball games, and I, they were very, very active with helping the employees. But now shift some years later, we won't say how many years later, but shift some years later, and now you have companies with less employees who are doing more. So there's not that time to say, okay, you know, you need to take that 90 minute lunch break so you can go to the gym and work out or, you know, make sure you're, you know, you're meeting up after work to, you know, to do some engagement. And so they were giving, you know, for us, we were getting time off during the day and we had flex hours allowing us to be able to do that. But companies are really struggling with where do they find that balance because they have less employees now. It is a tough balance. Um, we're all trying to do more with less. Right. And this is where sometimes we forget what it means for, you know, for people to thrive. Mm-hmm. And for us to be in a thriving situation as individuals, we need to have all of our basic needs met. So we need to be earning basic um, living wage. We right. need to be in a safe workplace where our you know, physical safety is not threatened. Mm-hmm. We need to be in a place where our psychological, you know, psychologically healthy workplace where you know, we're being treated with respect and integrity. Mm-hmm. Right. So all of those basics need to be there. And certainly you were in a, a situation where you know, if you had all of those amenities at work and you yeah. were given time off during the day to be able to do that, they were certainly looking after your well-being. Yes. But unfortunately, you know, that's not the case. You know, in in some cases, we have some old business practices that still exist. You know, the Mm -hmm. command and control and top-down management and profit before people, those kinds of old business practices just don't work anymore. So we need to be creating an environment where we can um, really look after the well-being of people Mm -hmm. in a way that is going to bring value and benefits to the organization not just to the, to the individual, but to the organization as well. When people thrive as individuals, right. the organization thrives. Yeah, because I, I mean, and I was, a, I was a manager there too. And uh, I mean, my, my people, I mean, they definitely were producing. You know, some people would think, oh, you had all that time off, 90 minute lunch, or hey, take the afternoon off and, you know, go out back and play volleyball, you know, in the volleyball quarter or, or whatever it is. And, you know, they did it during the daytime as well and had the flex hours, be, you know, allowing people that had family like me, I was a single mom. So I wouldn't have been mm-hmm. able to do those activities after hours because, you know, I had to get home to take care of right. my, my kids. So it's really important for an organization to find that. But like you said, we still have a lot of that command and control going on. We do. We out. absolutely do. My yeah. husband, he still works in corporate and, you know, and I'll say to him and he, and he, and he does, he comes home stressed and I'm mm-hmm. like, well, do you go for a walk during the daytime or are you eating your lunch? You know, it's like, you know, and he's like, oh, I don't have time for lunch today. You know, he'll come home famished. He's like, I'll oh, just feed me. And I'm like, you need to eat lunch. You need to make sure you're drinking your water. You need to just get out of the office and go for a walk. I mean, we're in Southern California. It's not like we have to worry about rain or snow. We have to worry about the heat, but, you know, get out and walk and just do something during the daytime because, and you, you know, more than I do that, re, you know, research has shown just taking a 10 minute walk throughout the day. Well, it's so interesting when, when we're working with our clients, we often start our work with them by doing some data gathering. And one of the kinds of things that we ask about is what do people do on their lunch hour and how often do they take breaks? Right. Because this tells us about the culture of the workplace. So for example, with one client, we found that the majority of their workforce ate lunch alone at their desk. So people weren't taking breaks. They weren't socializing with their colleagues. Right. They were just you know, either working through lunch or, you know, whatever they might have been looking at on the internet or, but that's the point being that they're not interacting in a social way with each other and they're not taking that break. And Mm -hmm. sometimes what happens is the culture in the same organization, we also found that the culture was such that employees didn't feel like they could take breaks during the day. And that's not good. People need to stop, step away, even if it's just for a few minutes. So you're so right, encouraging your husband to 
you know, take a break, even if it's just to go and refill your water bottle or, but step things like stepping outside and taking a 10 minute break, doing a walking meeting, you know, all of those things can be really beneficial to make people more productive. Mm -hmm. And yet what we see is that people aren't doing it, but the culture is not encouraging it. Mm -hmm. So what are the values and and behaviors Mm -hmm. and the norms that exist in the workplace? Because that's what the culture is all about. And And if the culture is heads down, keep working, you know, don't take breaks, people are going to get burnt out and they're going to be less productive. Well, you brought up one good thing, and I will say he did change. He doesn't do a walking meeting. He'll do a stand-up meeting. Still good. And it's good. I bet their meetings are shorter now. Yes, he said. He goes, it's a 10-minute meeting. Yeah. So we're not all sitting yeah. there with their donuts and coffee. He goes, yeah. I just, he said, we're doing a stand-up meeting. He does it this time every day, and it's 10 minutes. Okay, where are we at? Where do we go from here? And then, you know, he's like, we move on. So he did take that advice out. So can't t- say he takes all my but I also, you know, say to him, you know, because my, you're the leader of the company, you need to set those standards for, you know, for what they do and how, how they behave. So I, I, so talking about breaks as well, I, re, I remember, um, again, you know, I don't have this large organization around me anymore, but I would say to the team, make sure you take a break and make sure you take a break. Mm-hmm. And I remember my, my assistant saying, well, I don't smoke. I don't do that. I don't do this. She's like, mm-hmm. so it's only the smokers outside. So I remember buying her a pack of candy cigarettes and saying, here, you smoke, take a break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even if it, even if it was, uh, cause it would always be, you know, the smokers outside taking their breaks. But, um, so, you know, and again, working with the organization. So where do you find where that link comes in between the employees well being? their engagement, their productivity, their a commitment to the organization mm-hmm. when, a, when that culture changes, when there's that shift in that culture? Well, we've heard a lot about research from the Gallup organization that talks about how many employees are disengaged. Mm-hmm. You know, and this number is like, you know, 85% of employees are not engaged or actively disengaged. I know it's and when they're actively disengaged, you know, they're kind of working against, you know, they're those bad apple kinds right. of things. And there's a lot of evidence to support organization, the, the connection between when employees are healthy and they have strong, thriving well-being right. and the performance and the results of the, you know, the, the, the actual business results of the organization. Right. So there's been some recent research that focused on some organizations that have been award-winning organizations in terms of their you know, health and well-being, you know, management right. practices, mm-hmm. and they're outperforming their peers. And it's also, there's a lot of evidence um, from, in the book, Firms of Endearment. I don't know if you're familiar with this book, mm-hmm. which is based on the concept of conscious capitalism mm-hmm. and the idea of how, you know, when we treat all of our stakeholders equally, whether they're employees, customers, Right. Um, investors, suppliers, mm-hmm. when we treat them all equally and we you know, look after really the well-being of all of those relationships, that whole business approach mm-hmm. actually is one that is demonstrated that caring for your people, for your employees, mm-hmm. providing a meaningful work environment and supporting, encouraging both their health and their well-being actually can be tied to uh, performance and in the studies that are contained in that particular book, the organizations that excelled at this outperformed the, their peers by a three to one ratio. So this ties to the bottom line. It does. That, that really does. I mean, I know, it, you know, even when I was with, with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and we were looking at the economic development, businesses were really on top of looking at those type of studies. What does your community do? What outdoor activities? Because a lot of more so the millennials and the, the Gen X are really looking for those type of outdoor activities. Now, I look at studies a little bit differently. I'm looking at those studies because I'm really focusing on those that have really moved up or those that really want to move out and say, okay, I you know, I'm just not like liking this corporate stuff anymore. You know, I want to be able to, you know, live that lifestyle that I want to live. So I've been paying attention to that number. And the number mm-hmm. 
they are really high. They're saying 60, 70% of people, you know, are looking to, to really move out and start and have that lifestyle business. So it's really a critical time for organizations, corporations to say, okay, how can we help our employees engage? And the big piece of it is their well-being. Yeah, you're so right about that. And it's so interesting because when you think about an organization hiring, you know, first you've got to attract people to come to work there. And if you don't have the culture, if you don't have the physical workplace and the workspace and Mm -hmm. an attractive workplace, people are never going to come there. And in the economy that we're in today, where people are having great difficulty with hiring because... There's so many elements that influence that, but attracting good talent is getting even harder. Yes. And then once you get people there, you've got to keep them interested, keep them engaged, keep them excited about the purpose Mm -hmm. and the mission of that organization so that they don't leave because turnover is incredibly costly to organizations, especially when you go back to the the trouble you're having hiring people. Right, right. So it's, and it's, you know, it's, and it's exhausting, you know, it'd be keeping people there. I mean, again, I know I, I've, I've run organizations. So, so now it's like, okay, we got to keep me or we got to keep everybody happy. But organizations really need to look at that because people have so many choices now where, where they can go. And, you know, for me, seeing that number rising of how many people really want to leave. I mean, you see, you see commercials on TV, you know, alcohol commercials. Hey, people are taking the shot because they, you know, they, they want to get out and they want to do it their way. So there's so many things out there. So corporations really do need to get on top of this and, you know, and really find that place to thrive. I have a couple more questions for you because I know we really get into this, but I want to know more about you, like a little bit of our hot seat. So, Mari, I'd like you to finish this sentence for me. I am a leader because. I am a leader because I believe I am here to inspire others to creatively accomplish whatever they set out to do. Mm, I love that. So, you're an entrepreneur yourself leading your business. So, this finish this sentence. I am unstoppable because. <laughs> Because I don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a different playing field, uh, you know, stepping out of corporate. Again, you know, I, I led corporations. And when you step out on your own, it's a definitely different playing field. And yeah, you, you, cannot, you cannot give up. So what's your favorite uh, success quote? Do you have a favorite quote? I do, but I'm going to grab it and okay. I'm going to read it because... It is one of my favorites, and I keep it right here on my computer. It says, dream lofty dreams, and as you dream, so you shall become. Your vision is the promise of what you shall one day be. Your ideal is the prophecy of what you shall at last unveil. And that's by James Lane Allen. Beautiful. Isn't that neat? I like that. It really is beautiful. And I keep that right in front of me on my computer because I it's uh, reminding me to dream lofty dreams. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I have another one that's here. It says, don't downgrade your dreams to match your reality. Upgrade your faith to match your destiny. Oh, that's great. I love both of them. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. So Thanks. I have one more for you. Finish this sentence. Never have I ever. Hmm. Never have I ever, one of you sort of similar to what I said before, is um, given up on something that I really thought was important to achieve. Okay. So will you ever be satisfied? (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Honey, you know me so well. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Mari, spill it. (laughs) I'm just one of those people that, you know, I, I set a goal, I go for it, you yeah. know, I'm relentless and overachieving, I guess, in some ways, um, which is good. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. kept me focused on a lot of things in life and brought me a lot of success and satisfaction. Good. That is good. That is good. So what process do you go through to keep what's really important to you and then at times let other mm-hmm. things go? Oh, that's a hard one. Because 
it's so easy to get distracted and yeah, lose focus, it is. Um, which we all, we all do every day, right? And I think some of that comes down to personal disciplines, having rituals, you know, having practices that we can do in our daily life. You know, for me, some of that is around exercise, getting the right amount of sleep. I know when I'm, you know, not getting the right amount of sleep mm-hmm. that it completely messes up everything. So just really building some of those rituals and disciplines and then reminding myself frequently, you know, what are the goals uh, that I'm, you know, I'm working towards right. and breaking those goals down into bite-sized pieces so that I know, gee, if I'm going to get there, I need right. to do this and this in an appropriate time frame in order to get to that goal. Nice. So I think it's really because I'm a very, you know, I'm a goal-focused person. I think okay. those are the things that really work for me. Well, good. So that leads to my next question is what's next? Where do you you go from here? Well, I'm um, finishing up um, my first book is uh, going to be published next month. And I'm very excited about having that done. The name of that book is called The Thriving Hive, Mm -hmm. How People-Centric Organizations Ignite Engagement and Fuel Results. And that's been a labor of love. Uh, it's a business parable. So it's written as a, in a story format and it's set in a beehive. So that comes out next month. And uh, then I'll be busy promoting my book and looking for more speaking engagements to be able to impact and touch more people's lives. Nice, nice. And I understand you have some other giveaways for that book in an ebook form. I do. I have for your listeners, I have available an ebook version um, okay. that's you know available for download. So okay, and where that. should they where should they go for that? So they can email me directly at Mari M A R I at A D V like a daily vitamin wellness dot com. Nice, nice. Well, that is really all the time we have for today, unless you have some parting words for our listeners, and then we're just going to have to wrap it up. Well, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to spend this time together. It's always great to hear your voice. And just, you know, to for people to remember that no matter where we are in our Mm -hmm. lives is, you know, treating each other and all of those around us with respect and dignity and integrity and treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Um, not just in the workplace, but everywhere, Mm -hmm. you know, smile and be thankful and grateful for the interactions that we have uh, with each other and not take ourselves quite so seriously. There's way too much news today about terrible things Mm -hmm. happening where people just aren't respecting each other. And I think if we can bring some of that back into our lives and into the world, it'll be a much better place. Great, great advice, Mari. I want to thank you for being here. And I'm I'm just proud to have you on my show and 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 really the work that, that you are doing for, for people just to help them thrive is just really, really incredible. Thank you. So for our upper route listeners, this is your opportunity to go up and thrive in your niche market, or maybe it's going out and really igniting your engagement and fuel the, those results. You can learn more about Mari Ryan at advwellness.com. And that's where you could also get a copy of her ebook. Make sure you head on over there and grab a copy. You want to make sure you get this. And Mari, good luck on your book and good luck on your, your book tour and your book launch coming up. Thanks, Connie. So Up or Out is a brand of the Fife Group where our mission is helping you find the courage to unlock your inner power, regain control of your life, and insanely grow your business and not just a glorified job. I'm Connie Fife, and until next time, activate your power and know that we are all unstoppable together. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening to Up or Out with Connie. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest, email the team at bookme at uporout.com. Learn how you can activate your power at activatemypower.com. We'll see you over there. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.